Welcome to part two of Servicing Little Melvin. I split this video into two parts because I thought it was getting a little bit long, so sorry for this strange introduction to the video, but if you haven't yet seen part one, then I'll put a card up in the corner where you can go and catch it, where we change the oil, checked the air filter, checked the carburetor dashbot oil, um, we checked the distributor cap and rotor arm, and this time we are now moving round to the rear end of the car to adjust the hydroelastic suspension, and we're also going to adjust the rear brakes. Before we get to jacking the car up and readjusting the rear brakes, now that it's been a couple of months since I um, refurbished the rear end of the car, um, I want to do the hydrogas because if we jack up the car, it affects the hydrogas. So we've had the front of the car jacked up, of course, so the oil changed, but I violently shook the car about to kind of energise the suspension so it sits at its kind of normal ride height. Because if you leave a hydrogas sprung car, um, you know, for a few weeks in a garage, it sinks down to the ground and then you drive it again it energizes itself and then it kind of rises up. So um, if you pump the car up to, so if you've got a hydrogas car, it's not been on the road for ages, you pump it up to the correct height, go out for a drive, you'll come back, it'll be right up in the gods because that's kind of how it works. So before you want to do this, you want to energize it up, shake the car about so that the suspension does something. Now I'm not pumping up to the correct factory spec height here, all I'm doing is making it level on both sides because I'll put a picture up on the screen now, you can see the car is a little bit lopsided, it's lower on the driver's side and when I'm sat in the car it gets even lower of course. So all I want to do is put a little bit more fluid in it. So I've got my pump just over here. I've done a video on hydrogas before so we're going to skip through this but here is a whistle stop tour of how to pump up hydrogas suspension. So on all hydrogas and hydroelastic sprung cars that's annoying but we'll have to deal with it. On all hydroelastic and hydrogas sprung cars the valves are at the back, apart from A-series metros. A-series metros are different, um, they're independent at the front and linked side to side at the back, which is strange. There's one valve at the back, two at the front on an A-series. On a K-series and every other hydrogas front cars, one on this side of the back, one on that side of the back. On a K-series metro, they're underneath the car, right near suspension cans. You can't miss them. Little Schrader valves, standard tyre valve valves, um, and they've got a little cap on them. So, I've taken the cap off and I have my suspension pump here. Um, you can get these off the internet, they're off eBay, they're about 90 quid or something. Um, so there is the connector, so I'm going to screw this onto, onto the valve and then nip it up with this 19mm spanner. So now we have the pump hooked up to the car, um, I've opened it into the system with the little T-bar on the uh, valve itself. Um, and now this pipe has filled up with fluid, which means that the car has sunk down, um, not quite to the ground, but you know, very nearly to the ground. So, um, what we're going to do is we're going to pump it up now and get it level with the other side. This up. See it sinking down? And um, that's just it opening, letting all the air out now. So, we should be ready now to pump the car up. There you go, so that's about level. Um, so I'll disconnect the pump and move on to doing the brakes. So I've jacked the car up and put it up on stands. Now I didn't adjust these brakes that long ago because of course I rebuilt the rear brakes, but they need doing because at the time I hadn't used the brakes. Now that the brakes have got a few miles behind them, I can adjust them properly and get them set. And I can tell that they're in balance, not only because I've jacked it up and that one's binding more than that one, uh, or dragging more than that one, should I say. Um, but when I put the handbrake on on a hill, I can feel it holding more on one side. So, you know, clearly they need adjusting, and so that's what we're going to do. So I have my brake adjustment spanner. I'm going to start with this side. So what we want out of this is we want a clean and even drag across the whole travel of the wheel as it turns. So at the moment, don't know whether you can hear that. There is just an intermittent drag. So. Um, you know, the drum or the shoes, because of the way they sit, it's only dragging through certain sections of the travel of the wheel. So we need to um, tighten it up a little bit to make it drag consistently all the way around. Um, and that'll make the brakes a little bit better. Contrary to, 
you know, common sense, or what I think would be common sense anyway, you don't want them not to be dragging at all. You want them to be dragging just that little bit. Um, so I'll figure out which way around I need to turn this adjuster. In fact, that adjuster was loose. That's how... That's how insecure it was. Um, so I'm going to get this, you need to turn it around clockwise, looking from the back. Yeah, that's getting a little bit better now. That's getting a bit better, you can see now that the drag is causing the wheel to stop and you probably can't hear the noise it's making but it's becoming a more consistent drag. So, we'll turn it around one more flat. I think that's perfect, so let's move over to the other side and see what that one's doing. It's going to be a bit more difficult for you to see on this side because of course the exhaust's in the way, but... I don't think that's too bad actually. I'm quite happy with that. Uh, but what I'm going to do anyway... Now this is a little bit more difficult to do because the um, radius arm on this side is knackered so I've got quite a lot of camber um, on this wheel. I do have a new radius arm by the way for when the car gets restored so that will be done. Um, I'm looking for a rebuild kit for the other side though or a whole pre-assembled arm. Um, that side's nowhere near as bad though but if you've got a rebuild kit for a K-Series Metro or a whole new arm then let me know. Um, but I've got one for this side fortunately already. So it's made it a little bit more difficult but that isn't too bad. I think that's about right. Let's just go and have a look at the other side again. I'm going to take this side up a little bit more. I'm going to do this one up a little bit more to make it consistent with the other side. Right, I think that'll do. I've gone in the car and pressed on the brake pedal to sense the shoes a little bit more. Um, and they seem to okay. This side, very, very sensitive. And the other side not quite so much, but tiny little turns are making a difference between it being absolutely free of any binding and completely binding up. So, um, who knows? Um, I'm not very experienced in this, but I'm doing my best. So, I think that will do for now. It's binding just a little bit. I've got it absolutely perfect. Might end up adjusting it again soon. I don't know. But again, it's all going to be stripped apart again in the autumn, so... So here we are, this is just to keep the car nice for now. So on that note, I think we've finished everything. Um, I don't think there's anything else we've done. We've done the rear brakes, we've done the hydro gas suspension, we've done the carburetor dash pot, we've done the distributor and rotor arm, we've looked at the air filter, we've looked at the spark plugs, and of course we've changed the oil. So, what else is there? We could do gearbox oil, but I can't be bothered with that, and the gearbox seems fine. <laughs> so that'll be a job for another time. Well, there is one more thing that I very nearly forgot, and that is, of course, service sticker. So, next service is due on the 26th of January 2023. That's uh, what, 18.993? 86.993, so there we go. Gotta do this stuff properly, you know. So. So on that note, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then please do click like and subscribe to TwinCam as well. I'm forever indebted to my wonderful Patreon supporters, so if you'd like to support me that way, then please do follow the link in the description. And I'll have more videos coming along soon.